Okay, members of council, we have quorum. This meeting is now resumed. Vote for me. Okay. Uh, before we do the member motion run through, I would take the release of member holds. Councillor Cressy. Uh, thank you, Speaker. On page four, at MCC 6.7, uh, 470 to 88 Wellington Street West, uh, there's been an advanced circulation uh, to adopt the confidential instructions to staff attached. Uh, with that amendment, I can release the item. Okay, on page four, CC 5.7. There's the amendment on the screen. On favor? Carried. All right. Any, any more releases? Okay, we'll go through the... Um, Members rundown. <clears throat> MM 6.1. Notice if this motion has been given, this motion is subject to referral to the executive committee. A two thirds vote is required to waive referral. All in favor, waiving referral, carried. On the item, all in favor, carried. MM 6.2. <coughs> Notice that this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the Toronto and East York Community Council. A two-thirds vote is required to waive referral. All in favor of waiving referral, carried. On the item, Pardon? All um, in favor? Carry. MM 6.3. Notice if this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the executive committee. A two thirds vote is required to waive referral. All in favor of waiving? Pardon? Recorded vote. Councillor McAlvey, please. Councillor Cole, please. Councillor Cole, please. The motion to waive referral carries 19 to 3. On the item, all in favor? Recorded. Deputy Mayor Minin Wong, please. Councillor Bailao, please. The item is adopted 20 to 2. MM 6.4. Notice that this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the Executive Committee. A two thirds vote is required to waive referral. 
Recorded vote to waive referral. Pardon? Councillor Carroll, please. The motion to waive referral carries 17 to 5. On the item, hold. Okay. MM 6.5, that's been withdrawn. MM 6.6, .6. notice that this motion has been given. This motion is subject to, to referral to the North York Community Council. Two thirds vote is required to waive referral. This motion relates to a Toronto local appeal body hearing and has been deemed urgent. All in favor with waiving referral, carried. On the item, on favor, carry. MM 6.7. Notice that this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the Etobicoke York Committee Council. A two thirds vote is required to waive referral. This motion relates to a Toronto local appeal body hearing and has been deemed urgent. <coughs> on favor of waiving referral, carried. On the item, on favor, carry. MM 6.8, notice that this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the North York Committee Council. A two-thirds vote is, requ is required to waive referral. All in favor of waiving referral, carried. On the item, all in favor, carried. MM 6.9, notice that this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the Infrastructure and Environment Committee. A two-thirds vote is required to waive referral. All in favor of waiving referral, recorded vote. Councillor Cole, please. Councillor Cole, please. The motion to waive referral carries 16 to 6. Okay. Hold. MM 6.10, notice of this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the General Government and Licensing Committee. A two-thirds vote is required to waive referral. All in favor of waiving, pardon? Recorded vote to waive referral. Deputy Mayor Min and Wong, please. The motion to waive referral carries 20 to 2. Well, then I can move it right now if you want. Okay, what is the amendment? Does it's actually the reporting date and it's actually to enforce it because the ashtray is, is actually in effect as well. We actually have created a bylaw to have this done. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so what are we doing? You want to hold it? You can have oh, all the that was, that was good. after bylaw. Uh, we want to finish before ten, uh, 6. No, we have to finish before 6, uh, so... Councillor Holiday wants to hold it down. Huh? Yes, there are a lot of community meetings. MM 6.11. Notice if this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the North York Community Council. A two-thirds vote is required to waive referral. This motion relates to a Toronto local appeal body hearing has been deemed urgent. All in favor of waiving referral? On the item, all in favor? Carried. MM 6.12. Notice if this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the Executive Committee. A two-thirds vote is required to waive referral. All in favor of waiving referral? On the item, all in favor? Carried. MM 6.13. Notice that this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the Planning and Housing Committee. A two-thirds vote is required to waive referral. All in favor of waiving referral? On the item, all in favor? Pardon? Recorded vote. The motion to waive referral carries unanimously, 23 in favour. Well, I think that was the item. That was the item. Yeah. MM, MM 614. Notice that this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the Executive Committee. A two-thirds vote is required to waive referral. All in favour of waiving referral? Recorded. Recorded. Councillor Peruzza, please. The motion to waive referral carries 18 to 6. Okay, on the item, recorded vote. Councillor Holliday. Councillor Layton, please. Councillor Cressy. It's, it's hard Councilor to Billion, when, please. When I, when I hear you talking, it echoes. Councillor Bradford, please. The item carries 21 to 3. MM 615. Notice that this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the uh, Special Committee on Governance. A two thirds vote is required to waive referral. All in favor? Recorded for waiving. Recorded vote. Boy, you're on a roll today, eh, Councillor Holliday? Councillor Layton, please. Thank you. Councillor Karajans, Councillor Fletcher. Councillor Wong Tam, please. Councillor Councillor Peruzza, please.
The motion to waive referral carries 21 to 3. Hold. Councillor Bradford, you're holding, right? Yep. Councillor Bradford's holding that one. MM 6.16. Notice that this motion has been given. This motion is subject to referral to the Executive Committee. A two thirds vote is required to waive referral. All in favor of waiving referral? Carried on the item. All in favor? Who said that? Okay. MM6 Okay, hold on, hold on. I can't. You made a mistake. You don't want to hold. Okay. Okay. On MM6 on MM6.16 on favor carried. Okay. MM6.17 Notice if this motion has been given, this motion is subject to referral to the Executive Committee. A two-thirds vote is required to waive referral. All in favor of waiving referral? Carried. Count. <laughs> Councillor Fletcher held it. MM 6.18. Notice of this motion has been given. A two-thirds vote is required to waive notice. This motion is subject to referral to the Infrastructure and Environment Committee. A two-thirds vote is required to waive referral. This motion has been deemed urgent by the Chair. All in favor of waiving notice? Carried. All in favor of waiving referral? Recorded. Councillor Kerry Janis, please. Councillor Peruzza, please. The motion to waive referral carries unanimously 24 in favor. On the item, all in favor? Carried. Recorded vote. Councillor Wong Tam, please. The item carries unanimously 24 in favor. MM 6.19. This motion has been deemed urgent by the chair. This motion is not subject to a vote to waive referral. This motion has been added to the agenda and is here before council. All in favor of the item? Carried. MM 620. This motion has been deemed urgent by the chair. This motion is not subject to a, a vote to waive referral. This motion has been added to the agenda before council for debate. On the item, all in favor? Carried. MM 621. This motion has been deemed urgent by the chair. This motion is not subject to a vote to waive referral. This motion has been added to the agenda as before council for debate. On the item, all in favor? Carried. MM 6.22. This motion has been deemed urgent by the chair. This motion is not subject to a vote to waive referral. This motion has been added to the agenda as before council for debate. On the item, all in favor? I like a recorded vote, actually.
Councillor Mallow, Councillor Karajanis, please. The item is adopted unanimously, 24 in favour. MM623, this motion has been deemed urgent by the Chair. This motion is not subject to a vote to waive referral. This motion has been added to the agenda and is before Council for debate. On the item, on favour, carried. <coughs> MM624, this motion has been deemed urgent by the Chair. This motion is not subject to a vote to waive referral. This motion has been added to the agenda as before Council for debate. On the item, on favour, recorded. Councillor Mallow, please. Councillor Mallow. The item is adopted 22 to 2. MM 625. This motion has been deemed urgent by the chair. This motion is not subject to a vote to waive referral. This motion has been added to the agenda before council for debate. On the item, all in favor? Carried. MM 626. This motion has been deemed urgent by the chair. This motion is not subject to a vote to waive referral. This motion has been added to the agenda before council for debate. Recorded, Recorded vote. Councillor Fillion, please. Councillor Perks, please. Deputy Mayor Minnan Wong, please. The item is adopted 23 to 1. MM 627. This motion has been deemed urgent by the Chair. This motion is not subject to a vote to waive referral. This motion has been added to the agenda as before Council for debate. On the item, on favour? Carried. MM 628, this motion has been deemed urgent by the Chair. This motion is not subject to a vote to waive referral. This motion has been added to the agenda and is, is before Council for debate. On the item, all in favour? Carry. MM 629, this motion has been deemed urgent by the Chair. This motion is not subject to a vote to waive referral. This motion been added to the agenda is before council for debate. On the item, um, recorded. Uh, oh, so can cancel the vote. Huh? Okay, so why don't we just hold it down until the mayor comes and we'll have a recorded vote? Okay. Members' motions, MM 6.5, Councillor Bradford is held down, MM 6.17, Councillor Fletcher, MM 6.4, Councillor Cole, MM 6.9, Deputy Mayor Min and Wong, MM 6.10, Councillor Holiday. And then this last one. <laughs> What's this? Okay, oh. we have a couple more to add on. 
Do we not want to go home today? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Our next. Yeah, let's add them on. Who is it? Okay. Councillor Layton? Yes, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. This is the request. Oh, sorry, I didn't have your mic on. Okay. To permit to add an item to the agenda as it's an urgent motion anxious without notice. <laughs> what is there's an anxious applicant? <laughs> Who's laughing? <laughs> the, 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 perhaps my staff put a bit of a joke into the urgent for reason for urgency. <laughs> You've got me doing it. On favor? Carry. Okay, who's next? Who's? What? You want to record it to introduce it? This is, oh. Recorded vote to introduce. Councillor Bradford, please. Members, we cancelled the previous vote, so your buttons may be lit up, so please make sure you voted on this proposition, please. Councillor Holliday, Councillor Mallow, Councillor Karajanis. Councillor Wong Tam, please. Councillor Wong Tam, please. The motion to add the item carries unanimously, 24 in favor. Who's next? Count Councillor Grimes? Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm adding a motion with 288th Street, a large tract of land in my ward, 20 acres plus. There's a, a transaction going on with uh, the board directors of Build Toronto and Toronto Portlands uh, that is taking place right now. It's urgent this uh, gets before this council at this time. On favor? Oh, oh, hang on. I would like a recorded vote. No. Recorded vote. Disgraceful. Councillor Bradford, please. Councillor Karajanis. Councillor Karajanis, please. The motion to add does not carry. The vote is 14 to 10. The required two thirds majority has not been achieved. I want to state what a disgrace this is not to put this on the floor. This is a very large tract of ward, a piece of property in my ward, over 20 acres. Councillor Fletcher has lobbied this council not to put this on the floor, and it's a disgrace. My community has not been consulted on this, and I am ticked off, and so is my community. When this comes out, I'm ticked off. And Councillor Fletcher, to lobby this council not put this on the floor is a disgrace. Councillor Fletcher? Yes, uh, Speaker. Uh, everyone had a vote. There's a transaction that has been completed. I'm very worried about legal issues, and therefore. What are we talking about? I had, There's no yeah. item in front of There's no item. Okay. Motion, I don't resemble that remark. The motion speaker, is what not on the floor. Thank There's you. nothing to Thank debate. Councillor Grimes expressed his disappointment on a motion that he introduced and <laughs> councillors voted against it, which is a little bit unusual. Councillor, all right. Um, all right. Pardon? Many times there's votes in this chamber that we might not like. 
And to say that somehow that's disgraceful, that somebody doesn't get their vote and stand up in that way, that doesn't happen very often. It's just de poor decorum. And that's all I have to say, Speaker. And I, I taking that kind of personally, uh, and that's it. Thank you. Point of privilege. Council. It's a personal point of privilege. It's a disgrace. Councillor Fletcher's taken this out of my community's hands. Speaker, and I stand by my comments. Okay, okay. Like, we've already exchanged. Disgrace. It, Absolute order. disgrace. Yeah. It's, it's, Councillor Perks had his uh, hand up first. Thank Councilor you, Perks. Speaker. When a member of, part of the council makes a point of privilege, you rule on it and we move on. A member may not get up over and over and over again merely to state their exactly. feelings on a matter. Exactly. I would ask that you stop recognizing sure. Councillor yeah. Grimes in this way. I am. And Councillor Fletcher, that's it. We're finished. We're fin Councillor Grimes, please. Please. No, but Councillor Grimes, please. I'm going to have circulated a motion Grimes made in up for sale, Speaker, and I'd okay, like to have okay. that circulated. Yeah. Well, it's not on the agenda. Go no. Ahead. You. This is not on the agenda. Um, page four, CC 6.3. <clears throat> Councillor Fillion, you held the item down. Yeah, now it's on. Yeah, just to have a brief presentation, Madam Speaker. Okay. Does council wish to have a brief presentation? Let's have a recorded vote. Okay, that Councillor Pillian has to be brief because we, we want to finish this agenda. Please. Well, Councillor Grimes, please. Well. This is a vote if we, if we want to have a presentation. We're voting if we want the lobbyists to make a presentation. Councillor Karajanis, please. Councillor Fletcher. Councillor Bailao, please. <coughs> Councillor Peruzza, your vote, please. Councillor Peruzza, your vote, please. The motion carries 18 to 5. Okay, brief, brief presentation, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Mr. Um, members of Council. Um, thank you for inviting me to present highlights of the annual report of the Office of the Lobbyist Registrar for the year um, 2018. I, I promise to go through this really quickly. Through the bylaw, um, Council codified uh, into law a set of values for lobbying transparency. The lobbying bylaw requires lobbying transparency through two important tools. One, the disclosure of uh, activity on the public registry, and the other is adherence to a lobbyist code of conduct. I'm going to quickly go through some data that is available in our annual report that helps um, the public understand 
uh, how um, our city government decisions are being made and who the stakeholders are that may have interactions with public office holders about those decisions. And uh, my ultimate goal is to share with you the success that we've had through the lobbying bylaw in providing transparency and accountability to the public and ensuring compliance. Our first slide just highlights that over uh, council term 2014-2018, there were 23,467 lobbying communications reported on our registry, which is a, a, a growth from the previous term. And I think it evidences the fact that this model has gained um, a robust part of the governance model here at the city. The next slide um, illustrates how lobbying communications are, are being reported in accordance with the bylaws requirements and uh, with the intentions um, behind the bylaw to ensure the public is provided with that transparency. Um, you can see that there are lobbying communications are being reported with members of council, staff members of council and employees of the city and that therefore the public is in fact being provided in my view with such robust disclosure with the transparency that's intended by the bylaw. Um, this, this data is available on page seven of the report. The next slide quickly reviews um, what's highlighted on page nine of the annual report, which is the most frequent recipients of lobbying communications reporting during council term 2014-2018 by Office of Public Office Holder, and I won't go through the details as you can find them on page nine. Um, one important thing I thought the public would be interested to know in, as well as all of you here at council, is that compliance is global with our model. Um, there are, uh, many continents across the world where our lobbyists ha have a place of origin, which may be a surprise to many, as a lot of people have a viewpoint that, that whoever is interested in city matters here are local people, but in fact, um, there are numerous stakeholders from the around the world that wish to express an interest in, in operating businesses here and having a say in the, the many different de city decisions that you're all involved with here at Council. So um, I just want to highlight some places of origin include Australia, Canada, Canada, England, Hong Kong, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. A lot of this success can be attributed to the hard work of my staff, both in the registry unit and in the investigations unit. I just want to let you know that we've had tremendous success with some breach prevention strategies that we undertook throughout 2017 and throughout our history, in fact. But in particular, in 2019, there were some um, specific things that were undertaken with respect to outreach and education, developing new education tools, and providing advanced opinions um, and consultations and pieces of advice. We believe that this is critical in ensuring that um, understanding how lobbying works and what the transparency requirements are here at the city is, is imperative in terms of helping the public feel that they can be engaged with their public office holders, they can participate in democracy, and they know the rules in which they have to follow to provide the public with transparency about those um, communications. The new education tools which I've um, shared with many of you and have been sharing with the public service and also with lobbyists uh, are outlined um, in our annual report but also available on our website. Uh, the public facing site has flowcharts and interactive tools for lobbyists um, about no trying to do a self-evaluation to determine whether or not they are in fact required to register. Also, the public service and all public office holders can benefit from information tools that were developed both in flowchart form and in interactive form that enable them to understand if they are being lobbied and what to do and who to call in my office if the pe person's interested in communicating with them uh, need some assistance and uh, in completing their registrations. Our office is always presented in its annual report for the public's benefit, the top 10 registered subject matters. And last year, the top 10 subject matters were as follows. Planning and development, technology, economic development, transportation, procurement, building permits, transit TTC, environment, water, real estate, with respect to the planning and development subject matter registrations, 
uh, for the first time this year in our annual report, we've dug a little deeper. Traditionally, planning and development is always number one on our top ten list, and we thought it might be helpful to the public if they took a bit more of a deep dive to understand exactly what kinds of subject matters are involved in a bit more specificity. So let's quickly go through um, the subject matters regarding planning and development or application zoning bylaw, combined application, application site plan, application official plan, planning policy study, application minor variance heritage, application plan of condominium, application of plan of subdivision. In 2018, um, the who, in terms of who was lobbied, is broken down into basically um, three top categories, employees of the city, members of council, and staff members of council. The how the lobbying communications um, are occurring is reported on page 35, and the highlight from this slide is essentially that most of the lobbying occurs through meetings and emails. Um, it, to conclude, I just want to emphasize that um, in terms of reporting out on the success of the model over its history, uh, I'm happy to say that there's been significant growth and success in attaining um, compliance with the, the lobbying bylaws requirements. And uh, much of that success has been attributed to the stakeholder participation and uh, the ongoing efforts that we have for outreach and education and breach prevention on the part of providing uh, front-end advice and consultations. Thank you. Thank you. There is no applause. Okay, Councillor Perks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I was interested in uh, some of the ways that the data is broken up here. I see you've got a uh, number of lobbying communications by ward, and elsewhere you've got number of lobbying communications by subject matter. Is all this available in some kind of database, or is it just uh, you'd have to go through all the lobbying records and hand tally? Our office has mined this data through the back end of the registry. Um, it is available in open data to anyone in the public who wanted so to your, receive your it. Work that you mined it? Yes, our, 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 our staff have researched all this data and extracted it out of the registry. Our new system, hopefully. Just, I, I just before you, before you go on. So you, you, your staff went and mined it. Has the results of what you found been put back as open data? No, it's all ah, there. It's okay. all there in existence for open data, but it is in the public interest, in my view, for our office to put it out so that whatever is available is, is put out accurately, in our view, because um, there, there is when the possibility that when someone accesses open data, they may not know what field they're looking at, for right. example. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Councillor Matlow, do you have a question? Do you have a question? Because you got, uh, okay, I sorry, I missed, I, I, I had perks first, and then you put your name. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the work you're doing. And um, I want to ask you, uh, first of all, about, uh, there have been concerns raised by members of council in the past about the, the ambiguity between um, the records of uh, lobbyists that have made efforts to contact the councillor and uh, then successfully having uh, engaged in dialogue with the councillor. So in other words, it wasn't clear when you would review the registrar, uh, the registry rather, um, if, if in fact the councillor was lobbied or if the lobbyist simply wrote an email and therefore said I contacted the councillor and the councillor may have decided I'm going to ignore that email and I don't want to talk to them. It's around the mayor's staff. Uh, no, it's not. There's councillors too. I just mean over there is. Yeah. Uh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor, for your question uh, through you, Madam Chair. Um, that feedback was given to us over the course of us engaging with you in the redevelopment of our lobbying registry so that it could be clearer. The way the bylaw itself works is that an individual has to report their, uh, the, 
they're about to register prior to a registration. And, I, and we received feedback that it, it can be confusing using the existing disclosure site to see the differentiation between a meeting that's planned for and a meeting that's about to happen. So what, is but your, I, what is your response? But I, but I, can, I can assure you that the, there is a difference. What's in the annual report is lobbying communications that actually are reported and happened. And in the future, that issue has been addressed through the new lobbying registry that's about to launch um, into in, in uh, July of this year. Okay, so so we we, we have addressed that issue. You said in the future that it has been addressed. So just to clarify, sorry, you that know, we, we so are in, have so in July there will be a the, change to yes, the, we the are way that it's uh, dem uh, way that it's a displayed. new and improved registry will, okay. has been Great. has been um, worked on of since uh, 2015 when council approved the. Now we'll clarify the differences to, yes. to the average viewer. And one of the main okay. things was an effort to make sure that that would be clarified. And, um, and just to clarify, so the roles and responsibilities, and this is kind of for everyone's attention as well, uh, let's say a, a, a member of council uh, is um, walking down the street and they go into like a local bakery and they're buying some bread and a, a lobbyist that they know who they're also friendly with comes up and says, hey, how you doing, Bob? And they go, hey, how are you? And you chat. You catch up on life and you ask how your kids are doing and everything. And then as you're chatting, you're catching up on how the Leafs just won the game the other night and everything's great and the weather's improving. They go, oh, by the way, I, you know, um, here, you know, I'll, by the way, I'll pick up your bread. Oh, and by the way, um, you know that development matter that's coming to council next week? I'd love to chat with you about that, and, you know. And as you're chatting about life and everything, they kind of bring up, you know, I'd really like, I've got a client. And all of a sudden, you realize, wait a sec, I'm being lobbied as I'm trying to buy some rye. And I didn't expect this, um, and it happened though. So, what is what is the responsibility of the lobbyist, and what is the responsibility of the councillor in that case, um, uh, if if that if that occasion occurs? Well, I would I would encourage um, all members of councils, I do with all the public members of the public service, to know the lobbying Sorry, bylaw I can't, rules. I can't hear you. Um, Sorry, there's a lot of talking. So I there's I just, a lot of talking. Right yeah. Now. yeah. Uh, would you hold on for just a moment? Would you mind just helping uh, this? Uh, what? I just okay, couldn't. members of council, please. Please. Pardon me for saying this, Councillor, but that's a quite a loaded st question with, an, with a lot of things happening in well, one forget, story. Forget, forget but the first, why, <laughs> but you know my point, right? But the point is, yes, um, personal communications are allowed, but lobbying is lobbying, and all lobbyists are expected to know the rules that apply to them. That's the, that's the most straightforward answer that I can give you. What is a and, what is a and at this okay, point... Councillor Madlow, why are you interrupting? I, I'm, I'm, Let I'm, her I'm, answer the question. I'm excited. No, I would say, please call my office because I will assist you in, in, in assisting the lobbyists to be frank and transparent and comply and have record all the communications and his intention to have a meeting with you. So, so you see, About the subject matter. You say, please call the office. Is there a responsibility? So, for example, if a councillor is informally lobbied um, and, you know, all of a sudden they find themselves in a situation where it's clearly happening, mm -hmm. is there any, like... Is there any responsibility or is it just encouragement that the councillor uh, in some way reported? I would encourage you to discuss your roles and responsibilities with the integrity commissioner, but I can say that um, it would be um, incumbent on any public office holder uh, who was placed in a situation where they feel that a bylaw is being breached, that they would reach out to the appropriate authority and or uh, refer the individual that is uh, attempting to make Th an unregistered communication to me. Thank you. Okay, come on, members of council, we just have a couple more items. We want to finish the agenda. Councillor Fillion. Uh, yes, thank like, you. Um, just uh, briefly, um, are there any um, changes from previous years that you would want us to know? We just have 2018. Okay, can I, hold on. Are hold there on. any? Can I have some quiet, please? Councillor Bylaw, Councillor Pasternak, come on. Is there anything we should know that is that shows a, a trend or a change from previous years? 
I'm happy to report, as I did in the annual report, that our breach prevention exercise with respect to understanding uh, obligations with respect to lobbying activity and political activity were very successful with this election. Of course, we don't know what will be reported as to us in the future, but we can say at this stage of coming out of the last election, we don't have any complaints um, regarding that type of issue, and it was an issue in the previous election. Okay. So that's a success. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so our next item. What? Motion to receive the report by Councillor Carroll on favor carried. Thank you. Um, Page 3, CC 6.8, appointments uh, to the TRCA. Councillor Ainsley, you held the item down. I don't have any questions, Madam Speaker. No, I'm I, more I have an amendment. I'm more than happy to move it. No, you already did earlier. And oh. Okay. Yes, but I think... Um, Members of Council wanted to hold it down because they had questions. So, Deputy Mayor Men and Wong, do you have a question? Do you have a question to Councillor Ainsley? You want to speak to it? Okay. Deputy Mayor Men and Wong to speak. Put the motion up on the screen. Yeah, so um, I'm not supporting the amendment. Um, I think that if we're going to do this, that it I, I don't know why we, you distinguish out the conservation authority to apply this policy as opposed to any other um, any other organizations or entities. Um, and I'm, as chair of the Civic Appointments Committee, there are consequences and implications to doing that. It, it actually does limit our capacity to make selections um, because you're constrained in terms of who you can select. It affects who you select for interviews and who you select as candidates. And um, you know, uh, I think that there has to be, um, you know, a, a more measured and thoughtful approach to this, and so that's why I don't believe at this time that this motion is appropriate. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So on the, uh, it's on the screen. On the amendment, it's on the screen. Recorded vote. Councillors Matlow and Thompson, when you're seated, please. And Councillor Bailao, please. The amendment carries 15 to 9. Item is amended on favor, carried. Um, page three, PH 4.5, Committee of Adjustment Panel Size. Council Robinson. <clears throat> now you moved your, you moved your amendment I earlier. did, but Madam Speaker, yes. uh, over the lunch hour I adjusted the first one and the chair of the committee has reviewed it as have staff. And so it's, I think maybe more acceptable just to me moved so it? this is committee of adjustment so um, just so you understand I've been more I think explicit now in number one uh, just explaining that this is something I moved at executive committee last year staff have been working on an end to end review uh, and this is just simply to ask that we um, get a update on that or the final report by the third quarter of 2019 as many of you know COA affects deeply all of our wards and second one is uh, again to try to look at the feasibility of making these 
uh, this, this uh, appeal body more accessible. I don't know if that's feasible or not. Uh, it was a suggestion that came up at committee. I don't know if staff will be overly keen about pursuing this, but it's something I think we should have a, a discussion around. If we start later and into the evening, I, in no way am I attempting to backlog anything. It's just trying to make the evenings part and parcel of uh, the process so that residents can attend. And the last one is a simple one. It's more of a really a technical one to make sure we're publishing guidelines, rules, and procedures documents on the website. That's not up now. I know staff are intending to do that, but I'd like to encourage them to get that up as soon as possible to give residents more information on how to navigate the process. So if you look at T-Lab, uh, they've actually got a lot of information like that up, and, up on their website. People can actually download the public guide, and I'd like to be in that same uh, forum where residents have uh, ample information on um, the rules and procedures uh, related to this body that for a lot of residents it's very confusing to, to, to really figure out how to navigate. So um, I think you'll be happier with this version because number one's been um, altered to be a little bit clearer than the first, than the one earlier before lunch okay, that we was do, placed. We do have a question for you, Councillor Carroll, clarification of the motion. Yeah, it's just a quick mm -hmm. one that probably makes, I'm just wondering if the timing of your motion is, is such that it's coming back at the same time as the planning process review. Is, yeah. that the, is that the purpose here in timing it that way? Yes, that's correct. So, uh, it, yeah, so they would be considered together. Yes, yeah, so I, I ran that by okay. staff and they gave me the thumbs up. Super. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure of that. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Okay, thank you. Okay. Councillor Matt Loth to speak. I, uh, I very briefly wanted to say that I wanted to thank Councillor Robinson for what is a very thoughtful and helpful motion. On the amendment, recorded vote. Councillor Karagiannis, please. Councillor Karagiannis. The amendment carries unanimously, 24 in favor. Okay, item is amended, all in favor, carry. Um, MM 6.30, Councillor Layton, would you just like to um, move it? Yeah, okay, on the item, all in favor, carry. All right, MM 6.4, Councillor Cole, you held the item down. Councillor Cole? No, Mike, no. yeah, thank you, Madam Speaker. I just wanted to just briefly uh, uh, speak to this because I think it's something that uh, we need to all maybe work together on. Uh, as you uh, well know, Madam Speaker, when uh, you were the mayor of York, uh, the trouble we had with the uh, bars and booze cans and the amount of uh, staff resources property standard resources, police resources that used to, uh, we used to spend on trying to close down these uh, outliers uh, that were uh, essentially a source of uh, neighborhood uh, uh, concerns and uh, dangerous uh, gunplay, uh, drinking problems, etc. So right now, uh, I think there seems to be a pretty alarming uh, increase in shootings. I don't know if you've noticed, there's one almost every day in the city. We're even ahead of last year's number of shootings, uh, and that is pretty uh, tragic. Uh, this came about because I had been working with MLS, 
uh, Toronto Police, the 13 Division, uh, with uh, uh, local uh, citizens. We're trying to deal with two or three uh, problem bars that uh, were associated with about three or four shootings that had occurred in one area of my riding, uh, my ward. So in, as we were cracking down on that with MLS uh, and uh, the Alcon Gaming Commission was helpful too, as we're doing this sort of attempt to control these bars on one side of the street, all of a sudden uh, on a, uh, I think it was a Saturday night or Sunday night, there was 15 shots fired at this bar, the, the truck, I mean a, a van that was stolen, etc. And the same bar had been the subject of three previous shootings before. So this was the fourth event. So I just got to the point saying we're endangering our police, we're endangering our uh, local uh, you know, MLS service people, we're endangering neighbors. Neighbors are calling me and saying, I'm afraid to even call you or call the police because I'm right next door to this place and something's got to be done. And you know, as you know, Madam Speaker, the real challenge is people think that the Toronto Police can close these places down. Well, they can't. And they keep going back over and over again. And they're endangering themselves. They have to go undercover. And if you ask the local police, they know these outliers. They're, they're the small minority of bars, but they're the outliers that look the other way or whatever they do. So right now, the Alcohol and Gaming Commission, I think, is trying to do what they can. But I would hope they would have more attention that they could place on these outlier bars. And perhaps, as you know, they do their due diligence. They investigate. They, they give people hearings. They do everything under the sun. But can we tell them, please, pay more attention to these licensed premises that may be, uh, according to local police, the uh, venues where this kind of gun activity takes place, not once, but twice, but maybe four or five times, and maybe suspend or revoke their license for, God forbid, for a week, a day. You can't do it right now. It's impossible. And I know you've probably had the same issues in some of your neighborhoods. They're just energy vampires, these bars, and they're dangerous places. And we have to at least get some more teeth in what the AGCO does to support what you know, our local services are doing, what the community is doing, and what the police is. Right now, the police just spend so many of the resources going back and forth, back and forth. But now we're not just talking about drinking violations. We're talking about, in my discussions with the local police, the 30 Division, the, the gunplay is coming from certain addresses. And so, and so the police come to me and say, can you help us? And I say, I don't know what I can do as a city councillor, because we don't have any powers here. Uh, so by sending this message to the Alcon Gaming Commission, maybe they can help in controlling some of these outliers, which are really, again, endangering communities. At the same time, as we try to improve main streets and do uh, BIAs and we have festivals, we get uh, programs in to help uh, uh, marginalize people, all these programs, and all of a sudden one of these uh, multiple shootings occurs, everybody says, oh, nothing's working. Uh, things are uh, deteriorating. So you, everybody gets demoralized. After all the work you do trying to build up a community and strengthen this, the local programs. So this is something that I think is uh, something that deserves some attention given uh, the non-stop availability of firearms. I, I just don't know what's happening no matter how many arrests they make and raids of they, they show, you know, the police show all these guns on the table. The guns are too common, and in my years being involved with this, I can sense that I really worry what's going to happen this summer, given the availability of guns that, that seems to be really exploding again. Thank you, Councillor okay. Cole. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Holliday to speak. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'll be brief, uh, but I listened to Councillor Cole, and I just want to read out the motion, unless it's been revised, unless I've missed that. City Council requests the provincial government to direct its Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario to revoke liquor licenses at any licensed establishment that has been the scene of gun violence or patrons have been in the possession of handguns 
or where the police have found handguns on the premises of a licensed establishment. So, you know, I appreciate the sentiments of Councillor Cole. I think a lot of us are frustrated with what's happening with gun violence in the city, but I don't, I don't think I can support this motion the way that it's written. Uh, it, it is quite focused on what it says. So if there's a shooting at a licensed establishment, this says to take away that restaurant's prosperity. My concern is, is that you know you have a, a crime that occurs at a place, and that place then has to close down. The other thing it does is it sends a signal to businesses in the city, and I appreciate maybe there is a signal that sent, needs to be sent to some of the places that are a problem, but it sends a signal to all of the places that now the business owner have to start worrying about, and additionally, their patrons, because their patrons might cause them to lose their liquor license because they've got something in their pocket. I think that's a lot to ask of businesses. Uh, I'm concerned about the practicality of that, and I'm concerned that, you know, restaurant, restaurant and bar owners now have to start to screen their patrons. And, you know, I, I worry where that could go. So I appreciate the sentiments, but I'm not going to support this motion. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Perks. Uh, speaker, I'm going to encourage members to support Councillor Cole's motion. Um, I, I hear what Councillor Holliday is saying. It is conceivable that someone is running a business entirely innocently and, and through no fault of their own, someone comes in and discharges a firearm. Fine. But I will tell you this. Uh, I have experience with a, a location in my ward where it happened not once, not twice, but three times over the course of the year, and we were unable to get much of anything done through the Alcohol and Gaming Commission. Specifically, what Councillor Cole has asked for is that we alert the province that this is a concern we have and we want them to take action. Now, I leave it to them to do the fine-tuning. They can sort out in what circumstances uh, it's worth pursuing further action and which ones it's not, but I will tell you right now, as someone who, together with Councillor Nunziata and Councillor Layton, spent most of a decade trying to get the AGCO to put any form of reasonable condition on anyone with a liquor license, it is incumbent on this council to remind them again and again and again that they, they are treating the, uh, the right to sell alcohol as a, as a get out of jail free card. You can ignore it. You can ignore the neighborhood, you can ignore the people living upstairs, you can ignore the, the well-being of your patrons. Once you want to sell alcohol, the province will do nothing to constrain you in any way. And I think it's important that we let them know as a council that it's unacceptable the way that they have been regulating these licenses. Thank you. Councillor Fletcher. Yes, uh, I'm just going to quickly say I'm supporting Councillor Cole. I appreciate what Councillor Perks had to say. And just believe me, this is not a blanket motion for all small business. There are a small number of businesses that become difficult businesses. If you were to say, how many of these locations do you have? You may have one or two, but it is chronic. It's chronic as a difficult location. And so if we pass this today, I actually believe that the next time there's gunplay, gunfire, violence of that type at that location, which I happen to know in my ward where the difficult ones are, so do the police, by the way. They know where they are. Then I think Councillor Cole could feel free to bring a motion here saying, take the license under what we have done. So this is just one more piece of adding pressure. Once these events take place at bars, and I've had a few on the Danforth, the residents surrounding there, they can't believe that businesses and bars can simply run without any conformity to kind of good business practice and good behavior, and that there's zero recourse for the city. So I want to be clear, and I understand, Councillor Holliday, you're concerned it looks like we're taking a brush and saying we're going to wipe out a lot of small businesses. Those businesses that <clears throat> persist and have these folks that do these things regularly at these businesses definitely need to be called into account, and I think this motion does that. 
Thank you. Uh, Speaker Nunziata is next. Yes, thank you very much. And I'm encouraging members of council to support this motion. For members of council where we've had issues in our ward, and I know Councillor Cole, you share the same issues that I have in my ward, where you have some of these establishments um, that, uh, that continue to have problems um, where they're, um, they're open all night, it turns into a booze can or it turns into an after hours club um, and they party on the streets and the next thing you know there's guns and there's gun violence and the people that are living in the area they constantly complain and we put the complaints to the AGCO and, and it's very difficult. I have never ever experienced a, a, a liquor license ever revoked where there's gun violence or where there's crime in any of these bars, uh, what they do is they suspend their license for two or three weeks and that's it, and then they reopen. Um, and we have, and Councillor Layton and Councillor Perks and I, we, we had that committee um, on putting conditions on some of these liquor licenses. Whenever a license comes forward where there's an existing problem, we have always asked the AGCO not to, um, uh, not to issue the uh, license or to put conditions on it, and it's very uh, difficult to put conditions on it. So it's an issue that's uh, in my ward, and uh, there are just certain restaurants and bars where we have these problems. It's not, you know, family restaurants or, you know, it, it's some of these bars that are open and they cause problems for the whole community. And it brings down the community too. People are afraid um, to walk down the street when they have uh, that amount of violence. I remember years ago, there was a bar in, in my ward um, where we were trying to revoke their license for, for so long. We, uh, we did a petition to the AGCO, I made, a uh, I made a deputation, and there was a homicide in this bar, and the body was in this restaurant, in this bar, for three days before anybody was, even, uh, was able to, to get in. And I begged the AGCO to revoke their liquor license and they said absolutely not, they didn't. The only reason they closed is because they ran out of, they, they just closed up on their own, they ran out of business. But that is a case where their liquor license should have been revoked immediately. Um, right in the bar there was a homicide, a shooting. So, you know, we can't continue having these, uh, these bars and these that are operating this way and they, and, and they know who they are when they come into the bars. They know if they're dealing in drugs. They know, they know them all because that's how they make their business. And so if we don't uh, try to tighten up and work and um, lobby the AGCO to put conditions into where there's issues and there's ongoing violence um, that we should uh, be able to have their liquor license revoked. No questions asked. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nunziata. Um, Councillor Matlow is next. When, uh, when, when Councillor Holliday uh, got up to speak, I, I, I really did you know, read the uh, Councillor Cole's motion over you know, once and twice and, and three times. And uh, you know, I, I, while I empathize with where Councillor Holliday, I think, was going with his comments, and they were thoughtful, what he's saying is you know, he's concerned that there's sort of a blanket statement that could catch anybody and you know, how can you, if you're a small business owner, how can you be responsible for someone unknowingly uh, you know, showing up with a, with a gun? I, so I get his point. Why I strongly support Councillor Cole's motion is because uh, as Councillor Perks uh, said and Councillor uh, Nunziata said, uh, you know, uh, they're going to decide ultimately. This is a request. This is, you know, they're going to decide and they're going to nuance it as far as uh, how they want to uh, address our concerns. But what Councillor Cole is doing is reflecting the concerns that those of us uh, who have these neighborhood, so called neighborhood bars uh, uh, in the community are asking uh, for. They're asking for some sort of action. And one of the challenges we have as city councillors, and we, we've dealt with it uh, during the transit debate and the housing debate and so many other matters, is that for many issues, we don't have the ultimate say. We don't have the control. Councillor Cole earlier said, you know, people expect that the police can just shut them down. Police can't just shut them down. People write to us as councillors and say, can you shut them down? We can't just shut them down. We don't have those tools. What Councillor Cole is doing 
is reflecting a real call in the community for some sort of action. And he's doing what he can do as a local representative to request a tool in the toolbox to, to address a, a very significant concern. Councillor Cole and I share a, kind of a common community in the old city of York. And, um, and, and you know, you walk in those neighborhoods and you go door to door as both of us have. And, you know, the local, and I'm sure Councillor Nunziata can attest to this too, everyone on the local streets will tell you what bar is the problem and where, where the issues are coming from and where the repeated fights and repeated incidents and reasons why they wake up in the middle of the night worried about their kids. And this is ongoing and ongoing and ongoing. So we're not talking about any random uh, 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 small business. This isn't what this is about. The people in the community know which business we're talking about, but we don't have the proper tools to be able to deal with the situation. Councillor Cole uh, doesn't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. The police don't have all the answers. What Councillor Cole is asking for is just one other significant tool in the toolbox that might actually have some a consequence, some way to actually say there is some consequence for allowing this to happen in your establishment. So that's why, you know, I don't know if, where this is going to go, but I do respect the fact that Councillor Cole is doing everything within the limited powers he has as a councillor to be able to ask for uh, uh, the answer to this ongoing question that has not been resolved for many, 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 many years. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Karajianis. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I, I, number one, I, I don't share in the same problem that other places might have. Uh, yes, there's been problems up in my part of the world, but not to that extent. However, let's go down that path. There's a bar down the street and there's been a shooting. And the police arrive and the people around the neighborhood get very upset and they call the police. And the police says, well, you know, we can, there's not much we can do. Well, the individual that is calling the police thinks that the police are under the control of the city. So they pick up the phone, they call the local councillor. Yeah. Now, if you're the local councillor, try to tell me if you can explain to that individual, this is under AGO or ACGO, whatever we call it, and this is a provincial. And that person will say, but you are the local councillor, the, re the police report to you. So we're caught in a quagmire. We don't know what to tell the individual. Whatever we tell the individual, he doesn't or she doesn't believe us. And then we have the, um, the body, the provincial body that is not elected, not accountable, and they make the decision on our behalf what happens in our streets. There is certainly something which is a disconnect there. There is a disconnect between who's responsible, there is a disconnect who can do something, and what the people believe. And at the end of the day, the people will blame the local councillor for not taking action. And we're caught behind the eight ball. So I want to commend what Councillor Cole is doing. I'd go one further. I'd really go one further. I would say that uh, we ask the city manager to, uh, in, your, uh, in your motion, sir, that uh, I'm not sure if it's in there, that he writes to uh, the provincial body and says effectively we would like to not only make recommendations, but we like to have a say. We have a say if somebody, if the, the health department goes in and the, uh, the kitchen is, is not up to par and we close the place down. However, we don't have a say if the liquor license is in question. Now get a load of this. If you're a bar owner and you serve a little bit more and the person goes out and drives away, you're held responsible. Well, if you're the bar owner, the same bar, and you invite these characters, and those characters are shady characters or bad individuals, and they come and shoot each other, you can't be held responsible. Well, you cannot have your cake and eat it too. If we're going to hold you responsible for the kitchen because your kitchen is not productive and it's not, doesn't provide good food, then we should also hold you responsible if you're inviting these shady characters to come to your bar, and if you're allowing them to be there and they go outside and shoot each other. Unfortunately, we're caught behind the eight ball. So, Councillor, Cole, I'll be supporting your motion, and I urge everybody here to support that motion. Don't forget, folks, we have limited amount of tools in our toolbox. And at the end of the day, the constituent will not... 
Councillor Perutz, I do hope that argument is certainly sinking with you and you certainly will support it. At the end of the day, folks, we'll be held responsible. Thank okay. you. Let's, uh, let's vote. Uh, we, we have one more. Deputy Mayor Minnawong. Lay it down. Yeah, th on, <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm not going to be as uh, flamboyant as, as some of the other speakers, um, but I, I was listening to Councillor Holliday's um, remarks, and what struck me, the drafter of this motion, the, the, the drafting of it creates a level of rigidity, and um, you know, I, the ward that I live in, Don Mills, we're not, we don't have the same problems that that Councillor Cole's or me. ward may have, or Councillor Nunziata's, and I and I accept that, um, and and I'm grateful that it's a lot quieter in my ward. Um, but I would say this: this is the thing that I worry about. The way this motion is drafted, it says any licensed establishment that has been the scene of gun violence. So some poor guy who has a restaurant who's invested, you know, let's say his life savings, and he's, he's got it all on the line, he's got a big mortgage, and he has some guys, a couple of guys come in, and they have guns. It's no fault of his own. The way this reads is if something bad happens, they revoke his license. I'm not sure I'm okay with that. There has to be something a little bit more thought out, a little bit more well-developed before we, you know, these are serious words with serious consequences to families, to businesses, to people. And instead of, you know, getting up and making some, you know, dramatic speech about, you know, how, how all, these res all, all these places, these, there's booze cans, etc., that may be the case. But, the, but this motion should be drafted differently to give some uh, re relief or, or, or solace to those other businesses that aren't part of this and who, who might get, ca get caught up in, in, in these circumstances. So um, I can't support the motion. Okay, on the motion, recorded vote. Councillor Ainsley, please. The item is adopted 19 to 4. Next, MM 6.9. Um, Deputy Mayor Minnawong, you held the item down. It's uh, eliminating single-use plastic. Um, so, I'll. Um, well, I, I want. I'm not going to ask. Hold any on. Hold on. I see everybody's names. Um, Sure. Okay, you're there to speak, we're but you've got in the middle. So, so are who are, middle who are you asking the question to? Okay, Dep uh, Deputy Ma Min and Wong held the item down. So you want to help? You want a question to the mover? Yes. Okay. Um, get Councillor Carroll to ask Councillor Cole motion then you're up to um, to speak on it. Councillor Carroll. Uh, simply to, to uh, avoid a long discussion, uh, the, the, the biggest issue here is that it requests a report back to Council. This is clearly a big discussion to be had in Works Committee. Would the mover uh, see it as a friendly amendment to simply amend this that, that uh, uh, the report go to Works? where a uh, conversation could take place. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. 
So it doesn't really have to be amended because it's going to go there anyway. Deputy Mayor Min and Wong. Well, Madam, no, no. Madam Chair, I'm going to no. move a referral to the Works Committee. and you can't and, refer it. Well, you can change this. Hold much? on, hold on. Uh, the, so the problem, one of the biggest problems I have with this motion, uh, you know, I don't say this very often, but uh, Councillor, I share Councillor Carroll's concerns um, to the extent that um, this is a big, uh, this is a big um, uh, issue of public concern. The idea of plastic bags, whether they're good or bad, whether and what we should be doing about this. I, I read this and I said, report. I saw a report to council, and. Um, I do not understand. First of all, I think it should go to committee. It's a, it's a, it's a big deal. There, sh there should be public deputations. I'm on the, notwithstanding the fact that I've, I've done this on a number of occasions and spent hours and hours listening to deputants, it doesn't take away from the fact that this needs some public discourse and discussion. And so, so the report back to council, I think, is, is the wrong approach. Um, and I don't know how we can deal with this to the extent uh, I can I can I just explain? maybe you can help us out yeah can I just explain it again it is going to committee it's not coming to council but it says to, to council in the motion. so fair enough I won't ask why this is drafted the way it is and well, why it goes I, where it I is I don't know um, either. so I'm so if it's going to uh, it's going to it's going to committee that's fine okay Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I wanted actually to propose a friendly amendment to the mover to say City of Toronto facilities and city events. And why I identify this and why I think it's urgent is I did have my Environment Day uh, a, a couple weeks back. And for those of you who haven't yet, you're going to be surprised um, to see the compost is all packaged in plastic. So if you think about 25 councillors, 24 of us having environment days times two, um, that is unsettling to me. And I think that, that that practice needs to be stopped immediately. People loved coming with their buckets and their baskets and their shovels. And um, we had volunteers in our, in our neighbourhoods who came forward and anybody who was elderly or had mobility issues that needed help, there was people there to help them shovel into their baskets or buckets. And so um, when you see the sheer volume of plastic being used at one of our own events, which is an environment, environment event, it's, uh, it's, we're talking out of both sides of our, our mouth. I'll, I will also share with you something I discovered last year is the slow down signs that we all put, give out to our residents. If you take the time to look at the interior of that plastic, it's black which as the chair of Pewick last term, I learned, is the worst of all plastics. And here we are as a city, spreading our signs all over neighborhoods um, throughout Toronto using black plastic. So uh, those are two examples I would say uh, to the mover, thank you for moving this, but I think we have to think about our campaigns, our events, everything we're doing, not just our facilities, but all those extensions of who we are as City Hall. If we want to be a best practice and leaders, we have to step up to the plate first. So I would share that. Are we getting rid of the sign then? Is that what you're proposing? <laughs> so um, I, would, I would ask that that be amended. Is that okay? Yeah. That's what, the mover says that's fine. Oh, yeah. What did you do with I mean, of course. Okay. Yeah. You, you have to propose the amendment. You can't just. Yeah, but why don't you go to committee and amend it at committee? Like, it's going to committee. Really? Councillor Cole, did you want, like... Just briefly, yeah. No, I just think it's a, um, an important opportunity to educate ourselves, educate the public about uh, what's happening with single-use plastic. And, I, and I, what I wanted to do is make sure that before we ask uh, the uh, citizens of Toronto, the business of Toronto, to eliminate single-use plastics. Uh, we've got to uh, clean up our own house. And I think uh, Councillor Robinson gave uh, two perfect examples of uh, what we're doing uh, here that uh, should be corrected. And I'm sure there's other things that we can do to ensure that uh, we are uh, intelligently looking at the use of uh, 
plastic, and I, I think the estimates are that we produce about a billion plastic bags in the city every year. That's just bags. That's one billion. One thousand million plastic bag items every year. That's just bags. Never mind all the other plastic. So anyways, I just wanted to try and get uh, this to be folded into the review that's coming back uh, later on this year on uh, single-use plastic. And I thought what we should start doing is start looking at uh, our practices within uh, our facilities, our departments, and what we do as councillors uh, as we uh, really try to uh, really uh, respond to a growing uh, amount of sentiment out there. People are really ahead of us on trying to get rid of single-use plastic. They want something done. And so let's be smart about it. Let's look at all. This motion also calls to look at alternatives uh, that uh, rather than the uh, single-use plastic and looks at best strategies. In other words, working in trying to find solutions. We've got to be somehow smart enough to not uh, worship these plastic bags as we do to a billion a year. So let's, let's change that addiction. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Carroll. Well, Madam Speaker, um, God love the mover of this motion for moving it. Um, we always want to do our best here. Um, I'm not going to move an amendment, uh, but I'm also not going to wait until we're at the committee. I hope that it's simply an undertaking of staff. I hope staff are listening as I hope this becomes an undertaking. They would have to hear me in order to take on this undertaking. So I hope the deputy city manager does hear uh, what I am saying. Um, I, I, I hope as an undertaking that such report will include the history of this, uh, the history of, of what we, we hope to do in uh, what we have hoped to do with plastic water bottles, etc., in city facilities and city events, and our history of actually following through and not. But I also hope that the uh, the report that returns to us will tell us what is going on in other jurisdictions and how they succeeded in this. Um, what I heard the mover say in his own remarks, and I don't know whether or not staff heard this, was his, his uh, uh, intention was that this be rolled in with the overall review of what we are doing around plastics and where it fits into our waste stream. I heard that in his remarks. I don't find it as precisely in the written motion. So, if for staff it is easier to fold this into a report that is on its way to us anyway, I now hear that that was the intention. While it may not be precise in the written motion, that's certainly what we hope, is that if solid waste is coming back to us on, on single-use plastics, where we are with black plastic, et cetera, et cetera, that, that we now hear we don't have to have one report that starts a war in one place as happened with us in plastic bags when we had an initiative going somewhere else. Fold it all together because that was the mover's intent. And on that basis, I look forward to going to a works committee meeting to, uh, to bring the perspective of National Zero Waste Council where they are doing this work in Vancouver. Thank you. Thanks, Madam Speaker. I'll be brief. I'm not going to support this because just like the last motion, um, there is a kernel of some uh, helpful things in here. I think this is worth talking about at committee. But again, there's precise language in this that requires that the report back come back to council through the committee. Um, I would have not suggested it be struck and set up that way. Um, I think this is this could be part of a broader strategy, but. You know, again, looking at it exactly as it says, reduce or eliminate single-use plastic. So does that mean I've got to give up my big pens so that I can only use a pencil now? Um, do I, can I only have cloth bandages in the office instead of disposable plastic ones? You know, I don't know. Um, does that mean we're not going to use black uh, plastic garbage bags in any of our facilities? Surely that can't be the intent. Um, you know, there's, there's probably some things that we can do as a city and with our facilities. I know there's been motions about that at committee before, um, and I'm sure m most council would, would probably support that. But again, to try to go and eliminate everything or to somehow bring this back as a report directly to council, I don't think is the way that it, it should have been set up. 
uh, and for the, you know for that reason, I just can't support the motion as written. Uh, even though there has been some laudable ideas on here on the council floor and, and concerns about some of our practices, and I really encourage councillors to speak up to committee and bring those ideas forward so that they can be integrated into the right plans. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, on the motion. So just for clarification, this motion is going to committee. Well, the staff have to report back on it. Okay. Okay, uh, on the, uh, let's vote on this. We're in the middle of this vote. Um, which? Okay, Councillor Robinson's amendment. On favor, carried. I, item is amended. Recorded vote. The item is amended, carries 20 to 2. Page 6, MM 6.10, keeping our streets clean from cigarette butts. Councillor Holliday. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I have no uh, questions or further comment. I was able to work this out with my colleagues and suggest we just vote on it. Okay. Anybody else want to speak on the item? Okay, we can put the we put the amendment on the screen. Okay, on um, favor? Recorded. Councillor Holliday, please. Deputy Mayor, are you voting, sir? Deputy Mayor? Councillor Wong Tam, please. Councillor Fillion, please. The amendment carries unanimously, 21 in favor. Item as amended, on favor, carried. MM 6.15. Councillor Bradford, you held the item down. Oh, sorry. I, um, Deputy Mayor, did you say you had questions to staff? Okay, questions to staff. So, I guess it's being a clerk. Let me get this down. Okay. So, <laughs> so who are you? When, ha when Hansard when was originally created, sorry, Madam Chair, 
due respect. Come on, Councillor Carroll, please. <laughs> Councillor Carroll, that's pretty good. I even like that. No. It was Councillor Perks. It was Councillor Perks. Well, I just said I heard you laugh the loudest. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry, pa I apologize. Okay. Yeah, it Councilor was Perks. Perks. It was Perks. Admit it, Gordon. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, come on. Councilor Perks? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't hear it. I, I didn't hear it. I just heard the loud laugh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Want to go ahead and ask your question? Shelly, you got to laugh a little quieter. Yeah, yeah I guess it's be of the clerks. Um, we record <laughs> all, our, all our committee meetings, correct? Yes, we do make a video recording. Um, so any standing committees, there's a recording. Council meetings that are recorded. So we do have a digital record, an electronic record, correct? Yes, that's correct. And any members of the public, if they wish to view that, is there a repository where they can look at the meetings? Yes, it's all online. Madam Speaker, it's um, on YouTube. So it's on YouTube. So anyone who who actually wants to understand exactly what someone said, even Councillor Perks, who might want to write down those questions or answers, he can go to he can go to YouTube and he can write down second by second every single word that's said. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and uh, when so uh, when Hansard was originally created, there was there there was not this capacity or ability or or technology to do that. Yes. That is also correct. So, um, so, so now that we've uh, established um, the fact that anyone, any member of the public can easily look and get any record that they want, um, could you tell me, is there, is there a public interest behind, first of all, would, to have a Hansard service, would that, uh, it, would that be an expensive arrangement and is that in your existing budget to, to provide that service? Yes, to do it properly it would. It would be expensive? Yes. And do you have that money in your budget? No, we do not. I see. And could, could, do you see, now with, given the fact that anybody can look at any meeting any time that they want by going on YouTube, do you under, is there a public service that you can identify be, in having a Hansard service or a Hansard-like service where we have people translating uh, uh, word for word uh, uh, in a printed form uh, the, dis the discussions that we're having at this council meeting or through committees? I would, I'm not going to comment on your specific question, but I will say that depending on the user, their needs may be different. I see. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Carroll. Yeah, so just quickly, the motion doesn't ask you so much to uh, uh, simply prepare a Hansard, but to report to Special Governance Committee on this. Would it be expensive to answer the questions in this motion at Special Governance Committee? Could that be done without incurring much cost? There would be some cost, but it would be the cost of the staff that we already have in order to do the proper research to answer the question properly. Okay. And... Um, uh, just one other question, because you've described uh, what is available to us. Um, if I wanted to know, if I had the uh, agenda item of uh, something we discussed earlier here today, was, actu was actually before us in another form and in another transaction in 2013. If I wanted to know um, what was said in that debate, how would I get there? In 2013, if I had the agenda item number, how would I, how would I find out who said what? The archives for the um, video recording is 2015, so it wouldn't go back to 2013, but uh, there were audio recordings. No, there were 
or DVDs right. actually in 2013. And so was that the storage capacity of, uh, uh, so going forward, does YouTube keep things for a period of five years and that's it, or, or, or is it from 2015 forever? Can't have forever. So we actually, had, there's two processes in place. Currently, YouTube keeps everything forever, uh -huh. and we also have DVDs in place that okay. we keep. So when I go to YouTube, I have, a, I have an agenda item number, but how do I get to who said what on that item? Do I just go to 9.30 in the morning and scroll and scroll and fast forward and fast forward, stop, fast forward, fast forward? How do I get there? They're actually indexed, so you can get there um, from the item. Knowing the item number, and it'll take me there on the DVD as far back as 2015? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Councillor Karagiannis. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm going to ask some questions of uh, staff. In order to record something, you will need to have people that actually re listen, record, and transcribe. Would I be correct? Yeah, we have not done the research on what software might be available to assist that process, but generally that is an accurate description of what's required. Then you will have to check with a speaker to make sure that he or she said what the transcribed or what the scribe or whoever is, uh, is putting it together. That is we have not done our research at the moment, Councillor, so I hesitate answering that question. Well, um, the, the, but there are different business rules for different bodies that are adopted, and, and we let, have to take let, a look at them. Let me ask the other question. Are you familiar with the upper house, the House of Commons, that they transcribe everything, they send you a fax or they send you an email, and they say to you, please let us know if this is correct, what you said? Would you be familiar with that? As I said, Councillor, we have not done our research to yeah. that, that detail. Would you be surprised if I t were to tell you that this is the sequence of events? It wouldn't surprise me, no. Okay. How many people would you need? Uh, how many people do you think that would you need in order for this transcribing to be done? One person, two people, three people? How, how many people would your staff need? Madam Speaker, we have not done the research okay. to that detail. We would have to get some understanding of what bodies we would need to do this for, um, and, and that would all be part of the report. We would be developing you know, that as, as part of our answer. Let me ask you this much then. What would the cost of the report be? What would you estimate in order to, to do this report? What would you think it would cost us? It would all be covered in our current budget by our okay. existing staff. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Karagiannis. Um, Councillor Matlow is next. No, we're in the speaker. The oh, sorry. I was looking at the wrong uh, list, Councillors. I apologize. Um, I was trying to look something up in our records. <laughs> Councillor Holliday. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, through you to the clerks. Um, Hansard requires the recording of dialogue, and in particular, it could be between two people. Would you foresee that uh, perhaps procedural changes or at least conventions would need to change in how we work as a council in order for somebody to keep up with transcribing our dialogue, and in particular, when two councillors are going at it? Again, Madam Speaker. Deputy Speaker, we have not done the research to that detail. We would have to investigate exactly what would be required given the new softwares that may be available. Okay, could it, could it potentially slow us down as a council? In other words, we'd have to take more time to speak clearly and exchange with each other. Again, I'm not 100% certain, Madam Deputy Speaker, but I would say probably not. Fair enough. Um, you know, in the, in the context that we record all of our decisions, we record all of our motions in text, they form the body of what is placed online. What's the value of the dialogue that occurs on the floor in the decision-making process? 
is you know in for example if I can articulate a little better we just had a discussion with with a motion by Councillor Cole where in, in my opinion you know what was written on the page was slightly different than the dialogue that we had in the room you know is there is there value in recording that uh, in a text-based format because somebody that deals with the outcome of that decision would then have to take into context the, the speaking that went into that. As I indicated earlier, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, different users of, of the, such a transcript could have potentially different needs, but I would point out that it, all of this would not replace our minutes, and the uh, City of Toronto Act specifically requires that our minutes be produced without note or comment. So other than um, a, an academic, a researcher, a curious citizen, um, other, the material that's provided in our minutes and what is put online in text format today, does that serve as adequate information as an output from this chamber for staff to do what they need to do, uh, for clerks to send letters to the appropriate other bodies and governments and things in all of the actions that we expect out of our motions? Our minutes record the decisions of the body that makes them in full. And uh, I guess the last question, maybe it's the obvious, uh, our recorded votes are quite accessible both uh, through the internet type HTML pages but also I think you can download them as a spreadsheet if you really want some uh, fairly uh, large amounts of data very quickly. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holliday. Uh, Councillor Pasternak, a question? Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. Through you to uh, the clerks, it's, we, we often compare um, what's before us to what's going on in the House of Commons. Now, it's, it's my understanding that uh, when members of the House of Commons speak, they are protected uh, from any kind of civil uh, legal action within, within the, cha within the, ho the House. Um, and here, we, we don't have that luxury. If, if we produced a Hansard, uh, which could, would, would be out, uh, I guess, in, in the public domain, which is a detailed wording of, of our debate, um, would, would we be protected in any way uh, from someone who wanted to uh, use that documentation to launch frivolous lawsuits? That would be an issue. Um Madam Deputy Speaker, that we'd have to look at in the report, but it is a, a, a very difficult issue. So with new, new technologies, voice interactive technologies, I mean, they're getting better all the time. A number of years ago, they were quite crude. Could Hanser be created with, with the most modern voice interactive technologies instead of, no offense, but human resources? We use, we use technology. Again, having not done the research, I can't answer the question fully. I would assume that it could assist, but ultimately there would have to be a human being that uh, listens and checks against the, uh, the transcript that the software has produced to ensure that it's accurate. Okay. Uh, would we need amendments to the City of Toronto Act to go forward with a Hansard? Um, no. Even, even the so. requirement to publish detailed minutes? Well, as I said, the, minute, the, the requirement to produce minutes without note or comment would remain, um, and Hansard, or whatever we call it, would not replace that. Okay. I, I don't know whether this should go to our chief solicitor, but if we did a, a Hansard and published it in English, uh, could that uh, trigger uh, requests or, or uh, orders from the court to publish them in multiple languages? I would suggest that that be something that we, we look at. I don't know yeah, that don't we can answer it. I think there's, there's something in the act about that now, but we'd have to take a look at it in this context. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with publishing it in multiple languages, but it's something I think we should be cognizant of. Thank you. So, councillors, uh, those are the questioners. Councillor Min and Wong, you held the item? No, Councillor Bradford, I, I called it out. But Councillor oh. Nunziata apparently thought it was Councillor Bradford, so... <laughs> I'm turning off your mic at that point. 
That's correct, Councillor Bradford. It's because I was sitting uh, right in front of Councillor Minamwang that I thought it was him. Uh, you held the item, Councillor Bradford. Did you want to exercise your right to speak first? No, you have to go first. Yeah. I have to go first. Yes. Okay. Well, thanks very much. Uh, I thought this would be a brief one, but we're going to have a good discussion about it, and I appreciate that. Um, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, I brought this forward because I think it's important for us as a chamber here to constantly be reevaluating how we can make our government more accessible, um, easier for citizens to connect with their elected officials, understand the dialogue that goes on in these chambers. Um, while I appreciate uh, Councillor Men and Wong's point about the YouTube service, I uh, did a little bit of digging into that, and what I found was uh, for all the years that that's been online, we have barely 65,000 views of that YouTube channel totality in a city of three million people. So uh, I don't know if the council has gone back and tried to find particular items on the YouTube channel. I know I've talked to a number of you and, and that can be challenging, uh, especially if you're going a few years back to understand the context of a discussion. And I appreciate uh, Councillor Holliday's um, points about does it really matter what we're saying when at the end of the day it's a vote? Uh, and these votes and screen grabs come up on, online, they're posted all the time, and it it's, becomes very binary. You know, it's a yes or a no, and we all appreciate that. But I think we also understand that very much the, the nuance of the discussion is important. When we look at Councillor Cole's uh, previous motion um, with respect to um, the liquor licenses on restaurants that may have uh, had, uh, had gun violence, you know, that there was a vote and you can see that vote but i think that you raised up i think councillor holiday raised a number of really important points about the nuance of that and there was a lot of important nuance discussion around the single-use plastics ban as well uh, so the advantage to this is uh, you know you're not sifting through youtube for hours we've all hit the youtube wall we've all experienced that uh, this is as simple as the digitized transcription control f you can search uh, pull up exactly what you're looking for and I think it brings a level of accountability to all of us around this chamber that would probably uh, probably be useful and uh, I think that that's a good thing um, I would like to uh, I would like to see this report come back to the committee I think it's fantastic that we have this committee uh, in in place right now to look at things like this and uh, because there were so many questions um, as we heard from clerks I think that report will be a fantastic place to get those answers. So I'm looking forward to that and would appreciate your support. Um, I would say, generally speaking, everything we do here, I guess, is sort of adequate, but could it be better? Um, we are the fifth largest government in Canada. Uh, this, is, this is practiced at the provincial level, of course, it's prevent, uh, practiced at the federal level. Uh, and I think here in a city of three million people, this might be a useful tool to explore with the new technologies that we have today. And uh, I'm sure that the report will give us that information to make an informed decision as a council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Karagiannis to speak. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, having lived um, the Hansard, it's called for 26 years of my life, and I know Councillor Cole and Councillor uh, and, and Mayor Tory and uh, a couple of other colleagues that have served in other places. There's a value added for having a Hansard. There's also a lot of people that will be employed. You need to have a pool of people that actually listen to the tapes, try to, to transcribe the tapes, send you the information about what you said for you to correct and or make amendments or to make sure that the words that you say are correct. And there's a value added that, you know, you get some uh, books and you put them behind you over the years and then it goes on the internet and yeah and you might want to go search to see what this person says and what this person didn't say on a particular item but at the end of the day that value added and the amount of work that we would impose on our clerk I think is it doesn't make any sense they would have to hire at least three or four individuals uh, in order Sorry. Councilor you haven't been there you haven't been there. We're the third largest government in, in uh, okay, please, new technology, but you still will have to verify. You still will have to have a member of your staff go through it when it comes to you. You will still have to look at it, what you said and what's recorded to make sure that it's right within 24 hours before it gets published. And at the end of the day, um, Madam uh, Speaker, although it's a value-added tool, I think the expenses will overweigh 
what uh, the, uh, the outcome would be. So I say to um, colleagues, what we have right now, YouTube, works fine. Uh, we've lived with it for a long, long time. If a constituent calls up and says, what did you say that particular day? Certainly you can refer them to YouTube, the time and the place that you said it, and they can go and see exactly what you said or, or what they want to see. So at the end of the day, I don't think that it would add any more to our work, make our work any better, make any um, um, ex more, it will not add any value. So I'm just letting you know that, look, at the end of the day, I lived through it in 26 years, Councillor Cole, uh, 15, 20 years, 23 years, there you go. I don't think there's an abundance of people out there that want to go and say, search Hansford in, uh, in the provincial legislature and see what you were saying about this or that or whatever I said for the last 26 years. So, Madam Speaker, I'll leave it to that and uh, for everybody with that has an opinion, please weigh in. Thank you. Can I ask for some quiet, please? Councillor Fletcher? Quiet, please. Councillor Matlow? I, uh, I stand uh, in strong support of Councillor Bradford's motion, and I appreciate uh, Councillor Bradford uh, bringing this forward in the first place. Uh, what, what we are is a representative democracy. Enhancer is used in, in Commonwealth countries around the world. Uh, there's a reason for that. There's a reason why uh, uh, representative bodies, legislatures around the world use Hansard. It's because when we are speaking here, you know, it's not Josh Matlow alone from St. Paul's or Gord Perks from Parkdale High Park and all of the rest of you. We are here representing uh, typically, in our cases, 100,000 or more people who are entrusting our voice to speak for them. And they have a right and they should have the ability to know what we said on their behalf. Uh, the entire city, the people that we all serve collectively, should have an opportunity to know what we did. There is not, decisions are not decisions in isolation. Decisions, Madam Speaker, I, uh, speaking of speaking, I can't even hear myself. Right I know. Um, Councillor Peruzza. Councillor Kergianis. Yeah. Please. But this is an example. I mean, what we do here please. matters. What we do here matters. Okay, and, hold on, uh, hold on, hold on. Please. Okay. What we do here matters. Uh, the decisions we make uh, can impact the quality of life of almost three million people in the city and sometimes in our region and elsewhere. Uh, the decisions we make can affect thousands, millions, even billions of dollars that people had to work really hard for, that we're entrusted with, and that we're supposed to be making thoughtful and importantly honest uh, decisions about. What we do here matters, and it matters to a lot of other people other than us. But the decisions we make are not made in isolation. There's a lead up to that decision. There are debates, there are discussions, there are dialogues, there is information shared. And the beauty of, of, of Hansard, Councillor Prutz, if I may, if I may, sorry, I just can't hear. The beauty of Hansard, unlike minutes that give you just a general rundown, is it actually clearly demonstrates by, by virtual verbatim. When I say virtual, I mean it's not exactly verbatim. The coughs, the ums are omitted. But the conversation, the debate, the discussion is essentially verbatim recorded. And people get to see what you did and get to see how you did it and get to understand the arguments and can judge for themselves after the fact if the decision was made rationally based on evidence, based on thoughtful discussion, based on solid, grounded arguments, or based on empty rhetoric uh, or, you know, do we really believe in what we said or were we just being sort of ambiguous to get out of saying something because we didn't want to be on the spot? All that stuff happens in these kind of rooms and people have, uh, 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 should have uh, the right and the ability to see that and read that. Um, journalists, for example, 
There are times when City Hall has been the center of the action. Uh, when Mayor Rob Ford was here and there was a lot of uh, drama going on, uh, uh, there'd be a lineup of, uh, of media and cameras and reporters. I remember coming in sometimes and CNN and Al Jazeera uh, was waiting outside of uh, Mayor Ford's uh, office elevator. These days, we now have uh, one reporter I see, uh, Jennifer, uh, sitting there uh, because uh, she cares to make sure that somebody is, is, is witnessing what we do on behalf of the public from the fourth estate. But it's really difficult for journalists to be able to go back and understand what happened that amounted to a decision. Hansard is transparent and it provides journalists the ability to far more easily reference what occurred, how it occurred, how a decision was made to provide accountability for the public. I also believe that it will make us uh, more reflective of what we say and how we say it at council. We can be thoughtful and intelligent we can be stupid and intemperate. All of us have the ability to be any one of those things at different times. And I think it might actually contribute uh, to, maybe not all times, but at the best of times, some more cognizance that somebody's watching, somebody's recording, and that there will be, not just for posterity, but for the history books, literally, uh, a record of uh, every word we say. Because our words don't just belong to us. That's why we have an FOI, Freedom of Information Act, that I think is a broken system, but there's a reason for it, because the words we use that create the decisions are not just about the decisions, that the words we use, written or spoken, are part of the decision-making process. And they Thank don't you. just belong to us, they belong to the public. Thank you, Councillor Matlow. What we have before us is a request for a staff report. So if we want to get into the details, there's an opportunity. So, we only have one more item left, members. Okay, we want to, for the last time, we want to be able to get home early enough. Deputy Mayor Min and Wong. I know, I, I, Madam Chair, I know you have a community meeting tonight, so you'd like to. Community it's, meeting. It's yeah. this meeting. Very large community meeting. Very large community it's meeting. It's the same community meeting that you have. That's right. Um, Madam Chair, I, I, I'm not going to speak for long, but I have been, I have been uh, listening to my friend who was uh, in the legislature for 23 years, and he said not once in 23 years did anyone say, um, Mr. Mr. Cole, I read that you said this in Hansard, not a single time. <laughs> um, I will say this, he also said something uh, that I think that captures this very well. He says, where's the value added? I mean, I think he captured it very nicely in one simple question. The clerk's office has spent a lot of time, uh, you know, many years trying to develop their website and all sorts of channels. You look around the cameras here and the recordings, that, the, that, that didn't appear overnight. That took a lot of thoughtful, a lot of thought, a lot of care, a lot of money, a lot of resources. If people want to know that when, what went on in this council, there's a very easy way to do that. We do not, Hansard does not in any way add to that. It is just an antiquated duplication of a system that already exists. That's why I do not need to see another report, and I think we should kill this today. Thank you. Councillor Peruzza. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I'm going to support the motion that's in front of us, because I, I think it's a, it's a part of a much broader conversation that we need to have about uh, transparency. Council meetings used to be televised by, by Rogers. They used to be delivered on television. Um, there was an opportunity, and as part of their community uh, broadcasting, uh, uh, as, as, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at you, it's true. I'm looking at you. As, as part of their uh, community okay. broadcasting, hold, hold there was on, an opportunity on. to engage the Counselor, public. Councillor Prutza, hold on. Just trying. <laughs> speaker, speaker, it doesn't bother me. It's, you, don't need to, you don't need to stop proceedings on account of heckling or, or retort or, okay, go or ahead. comments or where I look. I'm not, I'm not dismayed by it, and it doesn't unnerve me. Uh, if, if someone wants to pay attention to me, they can. If they don't choose to pay attention, I'm okay with that too. Carry on. I, uh, I love it just the same. Uh, speaker, 
to, to get back on topic, uh, when, uh, when Rogers used to televise our, our meeting, the public had access to it. They could follow it. They could see what was going on. They could understand the debate, and they did that. And then when, when that was lost, we lost something very, very important. As well, um, the uh, members of council and the local politicians, as well as the community, had a, uh, had a vehicle by which it could translate uh, you know, uh, issues and community issues and goings on uh, and disseminate that information directly uh, with the public and vice versa. And I think that that's uh, a very important conversation to have. Now, I don't know whether it's a Hansard type system. It's true, as Councillor Min and Wong suggested, that Hansard is a somewhat anti antiquated system. Uh, it happens instantaneously. As you speak, you're being recorded. You can literally drop your last word and then ask for those comments back, and they're given to you. And you can read out what you said, or someone else uh, can reread what you said. And, and it's a very uh, and that was a very, very, uh, contrary to what Councillor Karajana says, it's a very, very important part of the, the debate because integrity and people paying attention to what they say is really, really important in public service. And it's, it's a way of holding people to account uh, for, uh, for what they say uh, because it's, it's actions that we take and the words that we use to explain those, the actions that we take are so, so very important in, in providing that kind of transparency. But I don't know whether it's answered or whether it's the video recording here or those kinds of things, but what I do know is that we need to have a much broader conversation, not just about this, but about how uh, the activity and what uh, City Council does, how that uh, uh, how the, the broader public and Torontonians uh, can access that uh, and, and access th uh, that activity uh, in an easy to follow uh, format. And quite frankly, burying it in zeros and ones on the internet is not the way to do it because not everybody, everybody still has a television, but not everybody has access to the internet. Not everybody has that versatility. I, I, I don't often see Mike Cole back here on his phone thumbing away. His thumbs aren't that, you know, not, not the, he does text, of course he texts, he does that. But, but yeah, we all, uh, we all have uh, uh, obviously different, uh, um, uh, different ways that we, uh, we access information. So I, I welcome that conversation, I welcome the report, uh, and it's something that I think that, uh, uh, a conversation that we need to have, and we need to have it in a, in a uh, I believe in a slightly broader context because I think that there's, a, uh, there's lots of community folks out there who would like to participate with us in this kind of conversation on how we give uh, Torontonians more and more access to what uh, City Council does and, uh, and quite frankly vice versa. So thank good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Carroll. Madam Speaker. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, tell people why I think they should uh, support the motion. And I, the, the main reason I think they should support the motion is we'll get into a discussion in committee and in fact we probably won't end up doing a Hansard. But I want to thank Center Table because what just happened while I was trying to figure out uh, the rest of, of the question I was asking, how do I navigate this item by item on, on YouTube, I discovered that we have already spent money. We can already do that, but in a way that wasn't layperson uh, easily discovered. But, but I've just been shown it. I suspect that if we get into special governance committee where we can properly have this discussion, we will find out not only what it might cost to do the old school way, Hanser, but we might discover that we actually have the means, we've already made the investments and hold the software licenses, that we can do this digitally, we can do it through our City Council YouTube channel, we just haven't been shown it such that we're confident as councillors to stand in a community meeting and walk our own residents through how they might do it. And that's, that's the type of enrichment of what we already have that should actually come out of the discussions we're having in special governance committee. 
We're worried about a deficit in democracy. We're worried about, in the shrinking of council, it becoming more remote from citizens and less user-friendly. I think that's probably the reason that Councillor Bradford put this motion before us. And I'm concerned about the same things. But it turns out we do have some tools. We just aren't well uh, uh, conversant in them ourselves, such that we can go out to the community and make government more accessible to them through that YouTube City Council channel. If this motion goes there, you're simply putting on the agenda that we have to make it so that residents can do the backstroke through our public record. And thank goodness the channel already exists. If you support the motion, this discussion will happen and should happen because we have already invested money in making it possible to look up by item exactly who said what in 2018 about whatever, whatever. And so let's go to that committee and have that conversation. Councillor Holliday. Thanks, Madam Speaker. You know, my colleagues often uh, snicker at me whenever I ask to record the waiving of referrals, and maybe this is just three examples of items that should have gone to committee and we should have had a good chance, uh, just as Councillor Carroll says. But, you know, we have this convention here that we easily waive referral on things, and this is what happens at the end of a meeting. But, look, I, I'll, I'm going to make a brief point on this. Um, I've been able to work the YouTube system pretty good. Uh, I use the minutes uh, of the meeting, which timestamps the votes and the items, and then you can translate it to the timestamp on the YouTube. So, you know, I find I can get things pretty pretty quickly, but, but that's me. I just want to make sure we're clear on what we're talking about today. Um, we're not talking about transcribing video. That's easy. You know, there's software out there. You can download the YouTube video, change it into words, and keep that as a text block and search that. I mean, that's... That's a technical thing that doesn't really need the attention of the clerks or the city. Somebody can, anyone can do that around the world. What we're talking about is the concept of the official records of the city. Um, looking at uh, Parliament UK's website, it's the Hansard site, it says the official report of all parliamentary debates. So the debates we have are really important. Um, we all participate in them. Um, there's, there's value in them. And in fact, he, he even, I go back in YouTube and look at them once in a while. But what we're talking about is adding a layer to what our clerk's office does because they keep minutes, they keep all of the records of the motions, boy, we sign them, they even keep those. So suddenly now they're going to have to maintain an additional official record set because that's what Hansard is. We're not talking about digital transcription of the video, we're talking about an entire line of business for the clerks. I'll remind members of council, if you're going to start to maintain official records, boy, after every council meeting, you're going to want to go check the answer to make sure that your comments were recorded okay. And you're, we're probably going to have to approve them and go through a whole bunch of processes around official records. Uh, I don't know what the legal implications are of keeping records of debates. We keep a certain record set which shows our decisions. And I asked the clerk about that in the questions, but now we're going to introduce this entire extra body and layer of files and information that become official records. I'm not sure that the YouTube videos are considered our official archives. They're out there for convenience and access. But this is what we're talking about in this motion. So I would urge members to be cautious about wading into the waters of creating an entire new record set, a whole new concept. Uh, it's much bigger than just simply transcribing video. And I, I appreciate the arguments and the reasons for that. But I'm not sure it is us or our clerks that need to do that particular operation. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's changing really the way that we do business. Frankly, the responsibility of the clerks and the responsibility of members of council going forward. Thank you. Thank you. On the motion, recorded vote. Councillor Layton, please. And thank you.
The motion carries 12 to 8. Page 7, MM 6.17. Councillor Fletcher? Councillor Fletcher, you have questions? It's on the um, off leash dog park. Councillor Fletcher, questions? I have one question. Done. Councillor Peruzza, please, I can't hear. I just have uh, one question, and that is uh, there is an amount in here from the uh, discretionary cash in lieu of $250,000. If the design comes back and it costs more before you need to tender it, then it's possible to come back and I can top that up. Is that not right? Through the speaker, that is correct. You don't really have a concern that we don't have enough money because there's money there should it be more than 250. Well, we have the 250. We don't know if we have more than the 250. So well, we you, you know I have more than 250 in my discretionary cash in lieu. So we would come back and have that conversation with you, yes. Can you it's share? Your, it's your cash in lieu in your Can you ward. share? Stop it. She's willing and to share. And there's uh, this park that Waterfront Toronto has developed as uh, East Bayfront that has a canine grass uh, area. Are you aware of that new park? that they've put in as their standard? Which park? Well, you shared that with us, so that will be part of the parks we look into, uh, also along with that motion, yes. And do you are aware that parks in very cold climates in Canada have quite successful large off-leash areas that are using uh, pooch turf park. for dogs? Pooch, 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 park. pooch, park, pooch park turf, right? Yes. Yes, through the speaker, that's correct. And you are aware that in Greenwood, that uh, Ms. Lepp, who is visually impaired, was in the park and fell over and hurt herself and broke her white cane in Greenwood Park. Through the chair, through the speaker, yes, I'm aware of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Called what it is. Deputy Mayor Minnawong. Yes, thank you very much. Um, last week. I was told that there wasn't enough money to build this, everything out for this, um, this particular project. Would you say that that was, that was, that was accurate? Well, we haven't tendered it yet, right. so I can't, I can't speak to how you came across that information, but this, we, need to do that. we need to do that work to tender it, and then we can confirm whether the 250 is sufficient. I see. Now, um, the, the previous uh, question said you could come back. I, I have, will you give us a commitment that if there's not enough money, you will come back and report out on this? No, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I, need, I would like a commitment from staff that if the, there isn't sufficient money and that, that additional monies are not available, that you will report back to, to, uh, to, to uh, committee. Uh, uh, about any extra money that might be needed. We would, we would have to report back to amend the budget to ensure that we have the funds sufficient to carry the work out. So you'll come back and report out through committee. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Now, Sir Fletcher. I do believe I have the floor. Yes. Sorry, I, and you know, it looks like uh, Councillor Fletcher there's, you know, pointing and calling plays and I'm not well, sure we would, we would engage. That's parliamentary. Uh, Parliamentary, except okay, parliamentarily uh, accept ask your question. Ask your yes. Question. Will you report back through committee or council if you do not have sufficient funds well, we for would, this project? Through the speaker, we'll work with the councillor and determine what the best course of action to report back is. Madam Chair, um, so if more money is required, do, do you not have an obligation to report to council for additional funds? We would have an obligation to report back to council, yes. And so you would report back? Correct. Thank you very much. Thank you. So ready to vote or Councillor Fletcher, you need to speak? Councillor Fletcher, did you want to speak? I did want to speak. And I certainly want to, obviously, if that isn't enough money, then there will be a conversation with the staff because there will be some community discussion around the design. And when it comes up to the tender price, just as it happens in any playground, any one of us may be working on, and staff say, well, 
that's falling short, we come back here and we move that motion to top that up to get to that budget. So I would not expect anything different and sending something to committee so councillors might want to kill a dog park. I just don't think that's the direction that I'd like to go in. I'd ask council not to support that should Councillor Min and Wong make that motion. Staff are very clear. If something gets designed they don't have the money for, either it gets designed to the amount or we find a way to top that up, but not from the budgets, not from your budget, Councillor Crawford, as we know. It's either from Section 37 or from a discretionary budget that is our extra money that's collected from development for parks. And I just want to say I'm very motivated to make this change. We've had this discussion in the community for a long time. This has been a park that's been in the news forever. Um, first, because dogs were running off leash. Second, because the way the park was set was too smelly and dusty. Third, because the surface is unsatisfactory and people in wheelchairs and blind people are falling over and can't access this great dog park. So this is uh, a commitment that I think we should try this and I'm willing to use the funds from development in my area because there's a lot of dogs to pilot this on a larger basis and let's see how it works out. There was some concern from staff that we didn't know what would happen in the colder climates. And the dog community is very resourceful and has sent quite a few pictures of beautiful dog off-leash in Winnipeg, Edmonton, Calgary, in the snow, out of the snow, interesting designs, little challenges. And now we see that Waterfront Toronto has developed this lovely park, which includes this particular type of turf that's built for dogs. So I would just very much like to uh, make this happen and let you know, and then we'll see. For anyone who thinks that it's easier to just have wood chips, and I have spoken to my parks operation people, at this location and at other dog parks that I have, they have to be tapped, topped up every year. They break down. That's very expensive. So for 10 years, that's about $50,000. And for 10 years, it's probably 250 to 3. So let's just take the chance and come into the uh, different standard that we've been operating with that many other cities have decided to experiment with. And maybe it will turn out great. So I'd like to ask for your support. And thank you. Deputy Mayor Minnawong. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm just speaking. Counsel, Councilor Fletcher intimated that I was against this dog park and I'm against dog parks. That's the first, furthest thing from the truth. I love dogs. In fact, um, I, I would be in favor of having open dog parks where dogs could run freely at certain hours subject to conditions. I've been, always been a big, big advocate of that. Um, I would say this, however. Um, uh, staff had told me uh, last week that this project was over budget and there, was no, there, there wasn't enough money for it. And that's, that's why I held it. And so I think that if it does go over budget, we need to know. And one of the clues that suggests that it will go over bu budget is Councillor Fletcher uh, said when she was speaking that Waterfront Toronto was involved. And you know when Waterfront Toronto is involved, it pretty. Oh no, you saw, I thought you said Waterfront Toronto was involved. We have a separate park that they're developing. Oh, I see. They're, oh, okay, very good. Come on, guys, guys. Well, one thing we one thing we know about that separate park, it's going to be a fancy, okay, okay. fancy park. And it certainly will go over budget. Okay, let's let's move on. Okay, on the. Um, okay, Councillor Fletcher. Councillor Fletcher. Okay. Yeah. On the members. On this. On the motion. On favor. Okay. Recorded vote. Where's, where's the... <laughs> Councillor Bailao, please. Councillor Cole, when you're seated, please.
The motion carries unanimously, 23 in favor. Next item is members motion MM629, which we held down uh, for the mayor to be here for when we vote on it. So are there any speakers on it? We just vote, recorded vote? Oh, okay, mayor. Uh, I'd just like to speak to, uh, I, I don't think it requires any explanation, Speaker, uh, as to the derivation of this, but I think that um, I, I'm normally not one who likes to see us get uh, too involved in things, certainly that happen outside the country, but there's okay, exceptions to that, even outside the province, because uh, I think we have enough on our plate here. But I think if you look at you know, the foundations of our own city and the waves of immigration and what they have done to uh, to make this city what it is, and what has accompanied that, which is the set of values that have uh, governed the way that we have tried, and we haven't achieved perfection by any means, but the way we've tried to build a city that embraces people and accepts them for who they are and, and uh, celebrates the differences, and in fact then above all else respects uh, freedom of expression and freedom of uh, religion. Um, it was uh, important, I think, that um, we should, in view of the solidarity that took place at the Montreal City Council, where as you know they have parties, uh, political parties, and they have an opposition and a government, but the opposition and the governing party there came together uh, just in the last number of days uh, to uh, say, to denounce, frankly, this legislation that's been introduced and is in front of the Quebec National Assembly. Uh, and so Councillor Pasternak and I were uh, chatting about this, and I think he had previously introduced a number of years ago on a prior occasion when this happened one more time uh, from another government of another political stripe in Quebec. Um, and I just thought, it, we thought it was uh, important that uh, not only did the Montreal Council speak with one voice, but that if you look at um, us being the largest and most diverse city in the country and them being the second largest city in the country, and you look at the roots of the country itself, which had our indigenous people, uh, and the country was founded on our indigenous people plus two founding cultures and languages. So I think this probably had something to do with our embracing of diversity from the very beginning. Um, we thought it might be uh, something appropriate to put in front of this council just to say that we affirm our own uh, commitment to freedom of religion and freedom of expression and that it, we do it within the context of saying that we are uh, standing shoulder to shoulder with our uh, friends in Montreal, uh, the Montreal City Council, which unanimously uh, expressed its deep concern and opposition to uh, this legislation. So that's the context within which this came forward and I hope that it might just send a small signal to some of our fellow Canadians in Quebec, uh, not just the members of City Council in Montreal, but everybody, uh, about how we feel about this here in uh, Toronto. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Recorded vote. Councillor Layton, please. Thank you. Councillor Robinson, please. The motion carries unanimously, 23 in favour. Members, before I ask for a motion to enact the general bills, may I have a motion regarding the consideration of submissions on zoning bylaw and official plan amendments? Councillor Bradford, you have a motion? Yep. Through the Speaker, uh, the Committee and Council consider submissions and making a decision on zoning bylaw and official plan amendments. All in favour? Carried. Councillor Wong Tam, you have a motion to introduce certain bills. I do, Madam Speaker. Um, I will move that leave be granted to introduce bills 555 to 591. Shall leave be granted? To introduce these bills, recorded vote. Councillor Fletcher, when you're seated, please. Councillor Bailao. Councillor Wong Tam, please. The motion to introduce the bills carries unanimously, 23 in favour. Shall these bills be passed and declared as a bylaw? Recorded vote. All I know is that I'm not going. Councillor Bailao, please. Councillor Layton. 
going. The game. Councillor Wong Tam, Councillor Fillion, please. Councillor Robinson, please. The motion to enact the bills carries unanimously 23 in favour. Councillor Layton, you have a motion to introduce the confirming bill. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. That leave be granted to introduce a bill to confirm to the point of the introduction of this motion the proceedings of City Council Meeting 6 on April 16th and 17th, 20, uh, 2019. Shall leave be granted to introduce this bill recorded vote? <coughs> Councillor Fletcher, please. Councillor Thompson. Councillor Layton. Councillor Wong Tam, please. Councillor Cole. And Councillor Pasternak, when you're seated. The motion to introduce the confirming bill carries unanimously. 23 in favor. Shall this bill be passed and declared as a bylaw? Recorded vote. Councillor Bailao, please. Councillor Layden, Councillor Fletcher. Councillor Pasternak, when you're seated, please. Councillor Peruzza, please. Councillor Ko, I don't know what you're saying with your fingers. Councillor Peruzza, please. What does that mean? The motion to enact the confirming bill carries unanimously 23 in favor. Okay, so thank you to the staff. Thank you to members of council. Happy Easter to everyone. Happy holidays. Motion meeting adjourned. Go Leafs, go. What is it, Councillor Cole? <clears throat> On behalf of Councillor Pasternak and myself, we'd like to wish everybody a happy Passover. Well, Hugsamea. Hugsamea, yeah. and uh, happy Easter. We'll see you on College Street uh, Friday at uh, 3 o'clock at St. Francis Church. 2.30. Okay. Happy Easter. Hugsamea. People are leaving. Uh, Councillor Layton very thoughtfully came over to me yesterday and just said, uh, had we said anything about the uh, terrible fire in uh, Notre Dame uh, in Paris? And I actually had tweeted something, but what we've done today is I think we've retweeted that and changed the colors of the sign to the colors of the French flag and, and we did that but we had sent something out on the very day of that terrible fire and I'm very heartened to hear that they're going to fix the building and I'm sure they'll fix it well and they seem to have lots of money to do that but I just wanted people to know that that's why the sign is the color that it is and we had put something out on the day of the on behalf of all the members of council on the day of the terrible fire. Okay thank, thank you. you. Okay meeting adjourned.